So you know what is leishmaniasis. Welcome to another episode of the Parasitology series. Today I'll be talking about Leishmania tropica, Mexicana and Brazilansis. In one of my recent videos I've talked about Leishmania donawani. Its link is in the description or maybe flying in the top right corner of the video. Before getting into the video, I'd like to tell that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things may change, treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. Let's get into it. Leishmania. It is an intracellular protozoan parasite. It is a genus of trypanosomes. It is responsible for the disease leishmaniasis. Here in the picture, you can see the necrotic sore on the hand of the patient. Classification. It has four main types. Leishmania donawani. I've talked about it in my recent video. Go check that out. It is responsible for kala azar or visceral leishmaniasis. Next one is Leishmania tropica that is responsible for cutaneous leishmaniasis in old world countries. And the third one is Leishmania mexicana that is also responsible for cutaneous leishmaniasis but in Americas. And the final fourth uh, species of the Leishmania is Leishmania brasilensis. It is responsible for mucocutaneous leishmaniasis in the central and south America. The first one is Leishmania donawani. You can see it's amastigotes in the macrophage of the human being. In the second picture, you can see the Leishmania tropica. In the third picture, Leishmania mexicana is visible. And in the fourth picture, you can see Leishmania brasilensis. Lecture outline. Introduction, I've talked about it. Now we'll talk about morphology of the Leishmania, Tropica, Brazilensis, and Mexicana. Their habitat and transmission, life cycle, pathogenesis and epidemiology, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, and finally the prevention. There are two morphological forms of the Leishmania in its life cycle. The first one is amastigot and the other one is promastigot. The amastigot is round or oval, while the promastigot is long, long and slender shaped spindle body. The amastigot is 2 to 6 into 1 to 3 micrometer, while the promastigot is 15 to 20 into 1 to 2 micrometer. The amastigot has delicate cell membrane while the promastigot has thick cell membrane. Amastigot has round or oval nucleus and same goes for the promastigot. Flagellum is absent in the case of amastigot while the promastigot has the flagellum. Here in the picture you can see the amastigot on the right side, it has a nucleus, kinetoplast, basal body, but it doesn't have a flagellum. On the left side you can see the promastigot. It has nucleus, kinetoplast, basal body and a flagellum. Habitate. Forest rodents are the main reservoirs. And humans are the definitive hosts because forest rodents act as intermediate hosts and they transfer the infection to the humans. And the infection uh, that occurs with the significant signs and symptoms in humans is called leishmaniasis. Transmission. Transmission occurs via the bite of saint flies, the female vector. Life cycle. Life cycle of Leishmania has two stages, the sand fly cycle and the human cycle. Right now I'm talking about the sand fly cycle, after that we'll focus on the human cycle. When the sand fly sucks blood from infected host, it ingests macrophages containing amastigots. After dissolution of the macrophages, the freed amastigotes differentiate into promastigotes in the gut, the gut of the sand fly. Then they multiply, multiply, multiply and migrate to the pharynx and proboscis where they can be transmitted during the next bite. The cycle in the sand fly takes a 
approximately 10 days. Human cycle. Shortly after an infected sand fly bites a human, the pro-mast goats are engulfed by macrophages where they transform into amaster goats. Amaster goats can remain in the cytoplasm of the macrophages because they can prevent fusion of vacuoles with lysosome. The infected cells die and release progeny amaster goats that infect other macrophages and reticular endothelial cells. The cycle is completed when the fly ingests macrophages containing amastic goats. Again, diagrammatic representation of the life cycle of Leishmania. On the right side is the human stages and on the left side are the sand fly stages. The first step is that sand fly takes a blood meal. It injects promastigort stage into the skin. In the second step, the promastigorts are phagocytized by macrophages, the human immune cells. Um, the resident macrophages are going to do that procedure. Then the promastigorts transform into amastigorts inside macrophages. Amastigorts multiply in cells, including macrophages of various tissues. Then sand fly takes a blood meal. It ingests the macrophages infected with amastigots. Ingestion of parasitized cells, the macrophages, occurs. Amastigots transform into promastigot stage in the midgut. Divide in the midgut and migrate to the proboscis of the sand fly. And then the sand fly again bites the human and the cycle is Patho repeated. Pathogenesis. The lesions are confined to the skin in cutaneous leishmaniasis. Tell me, tell me, which leishmania is responsible for causes the cutaneous leishmaniasis? If you remember, I've talked about it a bit earlier. Yes, you're right. It is leishmania tropica and leishmania mexicana. And the lesions are confined to the mucous membranes, cartilage, and skin in mucocutaneous leishmaniasis. Tell me, who is responsible for causing mucocutaneous leishmaniasis? Yes, you're right. Leishmania brasilensis is responsible for that. A granulomatous response occurs and a necrotic ulcer forms at the bite side. What is a granulomatous response? It is a reaction. It is a distinctive pattern of chronic inflammation characterized by nodular aggregation of inflammatory cells. Predominantly activated macrophages, which are often transformed into epithelium-like epitheloid cells. Necrotic tissue is a dead or devitalized tissue. Also, is the sore in the tissue or tissue lining. So necrotic ulcer is the sore, the sore of the dead tissue at the bite site. The lesions tend to become super infected with the bacteria because it is open. It is open to the infections to the microorganism in the atmosphere. So these can get into the lesion and cause the super infection. Epidemiology. Old world cutaneous leishmaniasis, it is also called oriental sore, caused by leishmania tropica, is an endemic in the Middle East, Africa, and India. That is why it is also called Thali Boal. New World Cutaneous Leishmaniasis, Chicle Ulcer Baso, caused by Leishmania Mexicana, is found in Central and South America. Mucocutaneous Leishmaniasis, also called Espandia, it is caused by Leishmania Brasilensis, occurs mostly in Brazil and Central America, primarily in forestry and construction workers. Clinical Findings First, we'll talk about the cutaneous leishmaniasis clinical findings, then we'll move towards the mucocutaneous leishmaniasis. Lesion is formed. The distinctive feature of the leishmaniasis is the lesion. In cutaneous leishmaniasis, initially red papule at the bite side appears. And it is usually on the exposed extremity. Enlarges slowly to form multiple satellite nodules that coalesce and ulcerate. What are these satellite nodules? A satellite nodule is an accessory malignant foci 
clearly separated from the main tumor with histologic characteristics. And these histologic characteristics are same as that of the main tumor. And it is usually a single lesion. Heals in immunocompetent patients because immunity will definitely get over the disease. If the cell-mediated immunity does not develop, the lesions can spread to the large area of skin and contain enormous numbers of organisms. Mucocutaneous leishmaniasis. Same, the lesion will be formed. So what are the distinctive features of the mucocutaneous leishmaniasis lesion? It begins with a papule at the biocyte. Then metastatic lesion forms. Uck is usually at mucocutaneous junction of nose and mouth. What is a mucocutaneous junction? It is the region of the body in which the mucosa transitions to the skin. It is in the area of the nose and mouth. This fragrant cranial motus ulcerating lesions destroy nasal cartilage but not adjacent bone. Disfiguring here would definitely mean spoiling the appearance of the cranial mitos. These lesions heal slowly, if at all. Death can occur from secondary infections. Lab diagnosis. Sample. We'll need a smear taken from the skin lesion. And we'll take it and visualize under the microscope for the presence of a mastigotes. The Leishmanian skin test. It will be positive when the skin ulcer appears. Remember? At the bite side, the necrotic skin ulcer, we are talking about that. Treatment. The drug of choice is sodium stibogluconate, but the results are frequently unsatisfactory, so it is important to prevent yourself from getting such infections. We can prevent ourselves from sand fly by using netting, window screens, protective clothing, insect repellent. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You've learned something. Don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media platforms. I've got my Instagram. I've got my Twitter. I really upload blogs. So do check that out. Till next time, Allah Hafiz.